Good morning, welcome to Tech Talks again. Uh, today, this morning, I have Jody of Etiwa. Etiwa is a state of the art vocational training facility in Lagos, and she's going to tell us a bit more about it. So, Jody, welcome to Tech Talks. And uh, Etiwa, what, are, what does that name stand for? And what do you, yes. what's behind it? Okay, well, first, thank you for having me here on Tech Talks. Um, so Etiwa is a vocational training center. Um, Etiwa stands for Emerald Training um, Institute West Africa, but we decided to go with the acronym Etiwa. Uh, we started in 2013, so we've been years. operating for a, a bit of a while now. Um, we specialize in construction trades, so electrical, AC training, um, plastering and block laying. We have up to 22 courses, different courses, ranging from one day to an 18 months apprenticeship program. Um, so we're internationally accredited and so, you know, our standards are as such. Um, what makes us different is, I guess, our uh, facility is very well equipped. All the modern tools and equipment that you would need to train um, is available. Um, we also have, uh, our workshops are not more than, say, we, we take more than 12 people. So each person has their own cubicle and access to their own tools and equipment and materials. And so which kind of clientele do you have that are interested in your service? I know it's in the construction industry, but yes. is it individuals who are looking, for, uh, looking to um, start a trade there or um, organizations that send their people? Right. So, so both at the moment, um, mostly organizations. I think we, when we started up, the idea was to cater for companies who wanted to upskill their technicians and artisans. Um, but, but now we're really trying to get youth, you know, um, who are unemployed into some form of skill and trade. And so we've created an apprenticeship program. We have like an 18 month um, electrotechnics um, apprenticeship program that um, provides training and also a work placement for you know people who want to learn a trade so so currently we cater for both so, so essentially you're trying to fill that gap between you know who, well you know either people who have gone to university and uh, or in a particular job before and they can't they, 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 there's no more there's no role for them so this is a, an opportunity to learn a new relearn a new Skill. trade yes um, so the apprentice apprentice program so who finances it? I mean, so if I want, if I yes, well, you see, that's that's I think a major issue. Um, so many people are unemployed. I think you know the youth need skills, and access to finance to actually you know go to school is you know a big issue. Um, so what we've done is we we have um, corporates, uh, companies, and sponsors who we work with in order to provide that financing for for these people. So are, are corporates willing to um, to uh, partner in that corporate social responsibility, or do they see it as a way of a way of also um, um, accessing resources? Right. Yes. Um, I think it's a win-win for them. For I mean, obviously, like industry who can benefit from um, you know those graduates who have trained. So um, they can guarantee that the people that they take in, you know, are highly are highly trained. So it's a source of manpower okay. for them when they do sponsor um, the students. So, so in terms of numbers, you've been in existence for five years. So how many how many um, um, people have gone through have gone uh, through. through any sort of training, whether it's one day course, as you said, or eighteen? Um, over eight hundred. Over eight hundred. Over eight hundred. So uh, eight hundred in a. So that's yeah. quite small. So, so yeah, yeah. any plans of expanding that capacity? Yes. Uh, because I mean, I think it's definitely a there's definitely a market for it in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of artisans that need their skills and um, upskilling, yeah. especially if we're if infrastructure um, building is going to be key in Nigeria. Yes, yes, we do need to upskill. Yes, because again. Um, the way we've structured, you know, smaller classes, more intensive classes, so that you know there's really quality training. Um, so that's what we focused on. So we do need to expand in terms of our workshops and our current um, current capacity. We do need to do that. Yes. In the conversation that we've had, 
Uh, Itiwa is involved in manpower power planning, upscaling, new trade. Um, on the gender side, do you have, so like, you know, I think mm. construction, do you, what, what's the female participation in this training? Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, females don't usually see it. I mean, it you are, you are. This as, is you here uh, sitting down here. Yes. Telling yes. us about um, plumbing and air, air conditioning. Yes, yes. Um, females don't usually see it as a career path. It's something that, you know, we want, we, we do want to change um, so that we know that you know, any voc any occupation, any vocation, you know, females can get into that space. Um, and that's happening world worldwide. So, so we are encouraging women at okay. Etiwa, um, even as part of this um, apprenticeship program. Uh, we have quite um, a lot of industry partners that do want to sponsor women into the technical field. Um, and so you know, it, it is it is open. It okay. is open. So do you, and so do you have any female participation on any program? Yes, we currently right do. We currently do. Okay. Uh, we started out. We started with a pilot project. We had two um, females that went through the, the the program very successfully. They're actually the only females in their program at Technical College, and we're talking a class size of say 60 students. The, you know, these two being the only females in their set. So. Um, so there are women out there that have taken, that want to take this line. And so we are providing that avenue because if not, they may end up leaving school and going into hairdressing or doing something, you know, other than what they've studied. Like I think of Nigeria, I think, think of, you know, new homes, homes are, new, are going to be uh, built eventually because we have a, a big gap between people and, and houses. And um, automate, things like home, um, home automation are, are, mm. uh, is some, something that is actually trending mm. and not as a, a, a fad, but it's also from a, a should I say, optimization perspective. Mm. So are you doing any kind of training in, in training that home automation space? Mm, yes, yes we are, we are. Um, from um, so your so your access, yes. Yes, yes. So if I wanted to build a house today and like I, I wanted, you know, to put on the lights, like, or should I say, put off the lights from, put off the lights from, from my office uh, when I'm not there, but if, if well, I, it, when I need the yes, house and all yes, that. Yes, yes, it's then, it's covered in the training. Yeah. It's part, it's part of it. Um, we do teach them that in both our, like for instance, electrical, your fault finding. So it's part of the curriculum and installations as well. Um, infrared is is okay. there, like electronic access control oh, is there. Um, okay. Solar power is also part of our curriculum. We're introducing that this year. Um, and so we're always looking at new ways of introducing these things. I mean, technology changes. Um, things like fi um, fire alarms and fire systems, how do you, you know, to install that. These are not things you find readily in any, in any other vocational center. So that we're big on that, making sure that, you know, the technology is, co is incorporated and that we're operating at, you know, international standards. I mean, like all these things you've said, you know, make me think of facilities management, especially in buildings, in branches, in, in organizations that have, how, how so, what is your impression of how facilities of management are managed, and do you think mm. that um, organizations need to invest more in upskilling their people so that their facilities are, are better um, managed? Uh, yes, managed? yes, definitely, definitely. Um, I think companies, and that's it. You know, uh, there's a lot of complaints that a lot of these um, students that come out of technical college and you know um, that are, they're not trained, they're not employable. These are the skills that companies are looking for. As you said, you go into a building, these things are already in, maybe installed. So the facility management, their job is to maintain. But if your staff has never seen any of this before, then you know it's almost compulsory. Um, and then, as you said, if it, there's no form of formal training and it's informal, then more than likely they'll not carry out the job or do a quality job. So. The, you know, we do have to get to the point here where we see it as a necessity. You know, I think companies that do come to us understand the, the, um, the importance of quality training and how that can impact the bottom line and add value to their company. Final question. Itiwa, five years. In five years' time, where, where do you want Itiwa to? 
to do? Um, well, expanded, um, increasing our current capacity and um, you know the center we have now, but also to probably move out and to go to other states as well. So, Fantastic. Julie, thank you very much for coming to thank you for having and me. And then we'll continue the conversation offline. Uh, thank you. Thank you.